Today I'm going to show you a simple way to turn tofu into vegan friendly meatballs that are flavorful enough for meat lovers to get behind. So stick around! Ganmodoki literally means imitation goose, and it's a dish that developed in Japan during the 1200 year ban on meat. For my version, I like to load it up with vegetables and mushrooms, and then I serve it in a lightly thickened broth. It's kind of like a more meaty version of agedashi tofu, and I have a secret ingredient that cranks the umami to 11. So let's start with a look at our ingredients. For the patties, I'm using 350 grams of firm tofu, one tablespoon of potato starch, a half teaspoon of kombucha, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm also going to be adding 50 grams of shiitake mushrooms, 40 grams of carrots, 50 grams of edamame, and two teaspoons of black sesame seeds. For the broth, I'm using one cup of water, two teaspoons of soy sauce, a half teaspoon of kombucha, one teaspoon kokuto or brown sugar, and one teaspoon of potato starch. I've also got some ginger and citrus for garnish. If you're confused about kombucha, this is a savory tea made from kombu or kelp, and it's not the same thing as the fermented beverage. It's a great natural way to add a ton of umami to any dish, and I've partnered up with Kokoro Care Packages again to put together a second edition box filled with some of my favorite Japanese ingredients, including this kombucha. These products are made by small artisan producers, and they're not usually sold outside of Japan, which is why I'm super excited to be able to send these to you in over 35 countries. This box also has my favorite soy sauce and Japanese brown sugar that you can use in this recipe, along with fragrant shimi togarashi and yuzu juice that tastes just as good as the freshly squeezed citrus. I'm also including some delicious treats that you can enjoy right away while you flip through the recipe booklet I'm including, so hit the link in the description down below to order your box. Okay, getting back to our ganmodoki, let's start by trimming the stems off of the shiitake, which I've already cleaned. Then I'm gonna slice them up like this. Next, you want to line them up and chop the slices into strips. Finally, I'm going to rotate these 90 degrees and chop them up. This doesn't need to look perfect, you just want to get them small enough so they don't get in the way when you try and shape the patties. For the carrot, I'm just going to cut it into thin slices like this. Then I'm going to chop the slices into thin matchsticks. Okay, let's get these into a bowl with the shiitake mushrooms, and then I'm going to cover the bowl with the lid and pop it into a microwave oven. I'm going to par cook these at 800 watts for about 2 minutes. If you don't have a microwave, just saute them in a pan. While we wait for the veggies to cook, I'm going to crumble the tofu onto a cotton cloth like butter muslin or a clean dish towel. Then I'm going to gather up the corners and wring out as much water from the tofu as I can. Take your time with this and get as much water out as you can or the meatball mixture is going to end up too loose. Next, I'm going to dump the squeezed tofu into a clean bowl and then I'm going to add the potato starch, kombucha, and salt. Then I'm going to use a spatula to mash the mixture together into a smooth paste. You can speed this up by doing this in a food processor, but this only took me a few minutes to do by hand. Okay, you can see how the tofu has come together like a dough, so let's get our veggies out of the microwave and into the bowl. I'm also going to add the edamame and black sesame seeds. Then I'm going to mix everything together until it's evenly distributed. Okay, let's go ahead and shape our tofu mixture into patties. I'm doing six medium-sized patties today, so I'm going to start by using the spatula to divide it up. 
Then I'm gonna grab a segment and shape it into a patty by tossing the mixture back and forth between my hands. This presses out any excess air in the mixture while sealing any crevices that'll cause your patties to crack when you fry it. Gammodoki are usually shaped into ovals or circles like this, but you can also shape them into smaller meatballs if you like. Okay, that's the last of them, so I'm gonna line a wire rack with paper towels and let's fry these up. I've got a few inches of oil preheated to 340 degrees Fahrenheit or 170 degrees Celsius, and I'm gonna carefully lower a few patties into the oil. As always when you're deep frying, I recommend using a deep, heavy bottomed pot to maintain a consistent temperature and avoid the risk of the oil overflowing. Once the surface of the patties is set, go ahead and flip them over. If your pot isn't non-stick, you may find that the ganmodoki have gotten stuck to the bottom of the pot, but don't panic. You can free them with a spatula like this. Then you can use tongs to flip them over. Now I'm just gonna let these fry until they're golden brown on both sides. This takes a total of about five to six minutes from when you add them to the pot. These are looking perfect, so let's get them out of the pot and onto our paper towel lined rack to drain. To make the broth, I'm gonna add the water, soy sauce, kombucha, kokuto, and potato starch to a pot and stir it until the potato starch is fully dissolved. Then let's get this onto the stove and turn it on to high heat. It's important to stir it constantly until it comes to a boil or the starch may settle and solidify at the bottom of the pot. Once it comes to a boil, let it cook for about 30 seconds to ensure the starch is gelled. It's not gonna get very thick. This is looking perfect, so let's get this plated up. I'm gonna set the ganmodoki into a shallow bowl, and I've got another one that I've cut in half so you can see the colorful cross section. Then I'm gonna ladle on plenty of broth. To garnish this, I'm gonna cut a few slices of sudachi, which is a Japanese citrus. If you can't find it, you can use any small tart citrus like calamansi or key lime. Then I'm gonna remove any seeds and cut a slit to the center of one slice and cut a slit almost all the way through the second slice. Now I'm gonna splay out the first slice with the cut ends going in opposite directions then I'm gonna slot the second slice into the center of the first one, guiding the two flaps under the flaps of the first slice. Let's get this onto our ganmodoki. And I also like to serve this with some ginger, so let's grate some up. Now I'm gonna gather the grated ginger up into a mound, set it on our tofu patty, and our ganmodoki is done. All right, let's try this out. I'm totally looking forward to this. It looks so good. Itadakimasu. All right, let's go in here. Let's get a little bit of ginger into the sauce first. It's gonna add some nice spiciness and fragrance. And I'm also gonna dab it a little bit with the sudachi for a little more fragrance. Mmm. That's so good. The sauce is just thick enough to coat the outside of the gammodoki without being cloying. And on the inside, you have the edamame and the umami from the shiitake mushrooms, and this kind of poppy texture from the sesame seeds that makes every bite interesting. Between the shiitake mushrooms and that tofu, you get this really nice meaty texture. And with the umami from the kombucha, you would never know that this is plant-based. Oh man, that's so good. I hope you guys give this a try. By the way, my first ingredient box quickly sold out, and with the holidays coming up, I suspect these are gonna go pretty fast. So hit the link in the description down below to get your order in so you don't miss out. All right, I'm gonna go have a few more ganmodoki without feeling an ounce of guilt, 
but don't forget to give this a big thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one.